our tale of the tape for this, our co-main event of the evening. Brought to you by Tom Clancy's The Division Two. Available now, and I'm glad they added the point sevens and really showed us the weight. Absolutely, and <laughs> one thing you'll see, nothing is identical here. 27 to 36 in age, big height difference for Lynn Vassell. He's closer to 6'5 and a huge reach advantage. Lynn on the outside can keep Moldowski down, but he wants to actually get his hands on him to take him to the ground. Michael C. Williams with the official introductions. Bellator MMA now features tonight's Cup Main Event 3. Five minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Live on Paramount Network, we introduce the blue corner at six foot four, weighing in 246.7 pounds. The former light heavyweight title challenger tonight returns to the heavyweight division, bringing 18 professional victories, seven defeats. Fighting out of Milton Keynes, London, England, presenting Linton, the Swarm of Massa. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at six foot one, weighing in 232.7 pounds, near perfect as a professional. He brings seven victories, just one defeat, fighting out of Stadiosko, Russia, introducing Valentin Moldovsky. And the referee in charge of the action, Jaron Vallel. Jaron Vallel, our referee. We wished him a belated happy birthday on the prelims. We'll do it <laughs> on the main card as well. Linton, the Swarm Vassell. Fighter. Valentin Moldovsky. We are underway. Tonight's Fight Clock brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste. And 90 and only 96 calories. Blue gloves for the Swarm. Moldovsky in the red gloves. And that is one big heavyweight. <laughs> Imagine that he used to fight at light heavyweight. Uh, you look at him, you go, God dang, he's a big man. And he is just put together. How did he get to 205? I don't know. Switches his stance just for a moment to southpaw. We were talking about, you know, all the years of cutting down to 205 and Joking about, wow, will Ryan Bader really go back there? And Linton said, well, oh, he might have to with those two belts. He goes, I'm not, though. That's a definite. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Bader may have to go back. That's a decision he'll make. But Linton knows I'm going to stay with where I'm at. The heavyweight is my class. I'm going to be here for a while. He's been thinking about it for the last few years. This is very interesting right here because Linton is very strong in his ability. Once he gets those hands clasped, yep, gets him down. He is so strong, he can pick anybody up, even from odd positions, and get them to the ground. Technically, two and two in his previous four fights as a heavyweight, but those were many, many years ago. And his commitment, he will tell you, quite frankly, was a little bit different back then. But this is where Linton has turned into a very strong fighter. On the ground, you watch what he does. And that's what we were demonstrating before. Look at the four, figure four on the leg, keeping himself in half guard. He does a lot of good things, and he is very heavy and very strong. So he creates problems. For, once he puts you on the ground, you've got to work so hard to get away from him. Here he is, trying to slice through. Nice. Nice team by Moldowski. Get himself back to his feet. Moldovsky, seven wins, four finishes. All four finishes have come in the first round. This is a hard-working type round one with all the grappling and all the clinch work. This is exactly where Linton wants this fight, though. He wants it, even if he's got his back against the cage. All of this grappling is what he needs because it takes the speed away from Moldovsky. It negates what is one of his biggest assets. And so this is good right now for Linton what he's going. Now that you get that separation, even though Moldovsky's the smaller guy, watch the footwork setting up the hands. Well, the, the hybrid, if you will, Big John, the hybrid 230-pound heavyweight has been one of the big stories in mixed martial arts 
overall in the past decade, and Kane Velasquez is probably, you know, the front runner. He was probably the pioneer. He and Junior Dos Santos, obviously, and we've seen the move towards these smaller, quicker heavyweights. Ryan Bader, perfect example, in our heavyweight Grand Prix, who have had great success. Yeah, well, you, you have, you've had these just ebbs and flows of guys being huge and then guys getting down. You know, Randy Couture came in and was fighting at heavyweight at about 225 pounds, That's and he was the point. heavyweight champion. Even Kevin Randleman, go back to him, 218, 220 pounds. Nice takedown, into side control. He should not have picked his leg up there. He should have slid. You want to cut through, don't pick up and bring it over. That's a mistake, and that's why he got back into half guard. He should have watched a big John breakdown. There you go. <laughs> the boost mobile vantage point. See how he was successful with it before. Okay. We got into this thing of behemoth heavyweights, you yes. know, and the, the Brock Lesnar's and the, you know, Cole Conrad's and all these giant Frank guys. Beard. And it was the Cain Velasquez coming back. All of them are now bringing this weight to where, you know, Fedor always fought somewhere in the 230, 35 pound range. And we're seeing that, look at, what's the hardest thing to deal with? Is it size and strength or is it speed? And when you're a heavyweight, it's the speed is what is hard to deal with. So a lot of guys are, they're not getting to that huge factor because they have to carry that weight. And in carrying that weight through the fight, they can tire them out and they can lose the fight because they can't keep going at that same pace. And there is no way that we can have this conversation and not mention Daniel Cormier. Did it in strike force for so many years. Doing it at the UFC, and he, it's about that size. Absolutely. Look at yeah. DC, man. He's just incredible. But proves you don't have to be this behemoth. Good first round for Linton Vassell. Fighter, fighter, fight. Round two. Linton Vassell, the blue gloves. Red gloves for Valentin Moldovsky. Linton Vassell. Still training in South Florida. He's hit, put down by Moldovsky. Black belt in judo. Nice move by Linton, trying to get back to his feet. Moldovsky's doing a good job of keeping his body centered on him. That was a mistake. That, that is exactly what can lead you down the path of failure. When you make these big moves, you got to be smart in what you're doing. Moldovsky got a little bit too into it. Overcommitted, and that's why you see Linton on top right now. Moldovsky has a law degree, had no interest in MMA when he was younger, wasn't active until age 18. First met Fedor Emelianenko in 2015 when he was participating in a Russian MMA championship match. He said Fedor was in attendance, he invited me to train. It was a great honor. Here I am today, driven by the desire to be the best. 27-year-old Valentin Moldovsky, part of Team Fedor. The Tokov brothers victorious here tonight. Team Fedor looking for a 3-0 night here inside the Windstar World Casino and Resort. Nice pass by Linton. You see him using shoulder pressure there. Moldovsky's got that down. That is a nice job of getting himself out, because that's not an easy move to get a big man off and with, and he does it well. Keep an eye on the cardio of Linton Vassell. He did not have to cut, which is a reason to watch the cardio, of course, for many years, John, but he's also carrying more muscle, a lot more muscle than he has in previous fights. Yeah, Moldovsky right there to try. He was going for a guillotine. Lynn was able to pop his head out. As soon as the guy gets sweaty, especially when they're bald, you just don't get that same grip. Uh, there's a difference. You know, a lot of guys will talk about guys having beards and all oh, it's you know it's like a chin protection it's like i want a guy to have a beard because it helps when you grab that chin you can hold on you're not holding on to the hair you're not pulling it but it makes it to where it's now sticky instead of being able to slide right out so you're telling clay guida to cut his hair <laughs> <laughs> or daniel strauss I've, I've told clay guida for years to cut his hair he always tells me buzz off <laughs> you also said that when Moldovsky swarms his opponent, he's a strong finisher. He is. He swarms his opponent. See what I did there? I got it. Yeah. He did that same. He did that same reversal. Linton has got to figure out exactly what he's doing because that is the third time that Moldovsky has used that reverse to get himself out of a bad position with Linton on top. Put your feet on the head. Put your feet on the head. Put your feet on the head. 
Being a really big dude with a lot of muscle who has trained at this size for the last eight to 10 weeks or a guy who's just had a horrendous weight cut, I've got to imagine the weight cut is obviously worse. Oh, look at If there's one thing I know right now, nice, nice elevator by Lynn, now unable to keep all the moldowski has got heavy hips keeping him down, so he turns. But when you're in that type of weight cut where you're training so much to keep your weight down and then having to cut down, it takes so much out of you. I'm, I know right now, Lynn is going, thank God I didn't have to cut weight I'm facing this guy. So the pace of this fight, the cardio, should not be a concern for the Swarm, who told us he's putting the work big time. Right into the gym after the fight with Phil Davis. He just put himself in a bad position for a long time tonight. Not good. He made a move with his arm up high. lebowski has got that head in the right place. He needs to just keep on bringing that pressure down, bring his hips down just a little bit. That's why you see Linton pushing against his arm with his right hand. They got a job to get now. Is he safe yet? Not sure, but not safe. But what he's a move. Free of that one. That was set up very well by Moldovsky. Lynn starting to slow down with all this movement. And this is what speed does. You have to keep up with that pace. And that can make you push to a point that it's pushing you off the cliff. And that's what we're starting to see right now. And that's what Moldovsky has told us a couple of times that his speed and his footwork separates him from the other heavyweights. And it's a good round for Moldovsky here, round number two. Swarm in the swarm here in the second five swarm minutes. Swarm in the swarm. <laughs> Just coming back with that one again. Right All the time. Right now, right now. Sometimes you gotta use that to get yourself out. You're burning a lot of energy, but he gets himself out of it and goes into the third round. Third and final round, John McCarthy, your scorecard. My scorecard is first round definitely went to Lynn Vassell. Second round goes to Moldovsky. Whoever wins this round gets this fight. Moldovsky is 2 0 oh inside the Bellator cage. Seven Bellator wins at 205 for Linton Vassell, cranking on the neck, lost it. Top position for Team Fedor's Valentin Moldovsky. Right in the Ukraine, fighting out of Stavi Nice takedown by Moldovsky because he stayed with it. And one of the things that Linton did, if you watch Linton's toes, kind of went back, and that stopped him, and that's what allowed Moldovsky to continue through with it. If his feet had been flat with his tops of his feet on the canvas sliding back, he just would have kept on sliding all the way back. Moldovsky would have ended up on top. Russell said he took just two days off after the title fight. <laughs> on the campus of Penn State in which he was finished in round two by the light heavyweight and heavyweight champion Ryan Bader and got caught with the head kick against Phil Davis in a fight that was pretty darn close up to that point. It was, it was a good fight. And it's one of those things that I think it was the wrestling of Phil Davis and, and just the, the threat of it is what caused Linton problems in that fight. And eventually, because he was worried about that threat, when Phil makes a move, his hands came down, the kick came up, he never saw it, and that's what ended the fight. And Linton did say, he admitted that he did feel tired going into that third round with that cut of 25 to 30 pounds. So he knew win, lose, or draw, that this was his next destination, but he's in quite a fight against Moldovsky here, John, with just over three minutes on the clock. Yeah, he's, he's starting to get in positions where he's got that knee shield inside, but it's, his leg is flat. When it flattens out, it means that you're not in a position to be able to move your hips out. He doesn't want Moldovsky to take his back, but he's sitting there in a position. You can't just stay here. He's got to move. There you go. And this is what happens when you do get tired. It's you're telling yourself, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And it's just just give me another second. And the time goes by and you're not moving. And again, when you're not moving in MMA, you're probably losing. Let's go. Past the midway point of this third and final round. Constant pressure from Moldovsky. And we talked so much about the cardio and not cutting. When it comes to the swarm, Linton Vassell, 
forget about either of those, 247, 207. It's the pace that Moldovsky has fought at that's wearing down his opponent. Exactly. It's when you are that faster athlete and you can create a pace that pushes your opponent at a heart rate that is beyond what is their comfort zone, beyond what they normally train at, beyond what they get those five round shark tank, you know, sparring matches in. You do that, you push them to a point where eventually they start to just break down because their heart rate has been at a level that is too high for them to maintain and they cannot maintain what they're doing to keep up with you. That guy up there at top of the screen, he's got really good at it. Yeah, Emmanuel <laughs> yeah. Sanchez. Again, specialty. going back to, the, to that nice head and arm choke. Give it a little bit of squeeze, but I think because of the first one and what he did, Moldowski doesn't want to give up position to try to go back to it for the finish because he couldn't get it that first time because Vassell is just so big and strong. As I mentioned, Moldovsky has four career finishes. All of those came in the first round. Moldovsky almost has what we call a gift wrap with the arm. He's starting to open up on here. Big shots. We'd like to get one here. 40 seconds on the clock. And this is more exhaustion yeah. than damage. And, and no matter what, you know, we talk about damage. Pushing your opponent to a point where they can no longer continue on the fight, that's damage. Two-time title challenger at 205, Linton Vassell. In big trouble here in his heavyweight debut. A huge round three for Team Fedor's Valentin Moldovsky. They go the distance. Here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, we go the distance. So we go in here, three judges. All three judges scored the same. Michael Bell, Ron McCarthy, Todd Anderson, see it. 29, 27 for the winner pot. Unanimous decision, Valentin Moldovsky.